This YouTube video will take you to various mountains in Norway and how I reached them using just public transportation. It also contains interviews of people of various nationalities including European and non-European and their view on the transportation system in Europe. This year's topic was Utopia for Justice and Peace in Europe and my answer was that my Utopia for Justice and Peace in Europe envisions a Europe where it's possible and affordable for any citizen to travel to any country. It would be based on a sustainable interconnected transportation system that promotes mobility, reduces environmental impact. By creating this system, we can contribute to a just and peaceful society in Europe. We started our journey from Braunschweig, changing six trains and reaching Copenhagen. After spending a day there, we went to Stockholm in Sweden. And after again spending a day there, we took the famous 25-hour train, which goes from Stockholm to Narvik, which is the highest point which a railway can reach in Northern Europe. Then after spending some days in Lofoten Island, we took a ship to Bodo. After we took another train to Trondheim and then to Andelsnes, which is the mountain capital of Germany. Then we took a train and went to Stavanger and after hiking in Stavanger, we went to Bergen and then to the country capital Oslo. After Oslo, we took a ship and went to Aalborg where my friend stays and then again I travelled back to Braunschweig. So we started our journey from Braunschweig where we took a train to Hanover and then to Hamburg. In Hamburg, certain trains were down but our spirit was not and taking advantage of the flexibility of an interrail pass. We took the next possible train and reached Copenhagen at 4 in the morning. As you can see from the pictures, there was enough space to keep luggage on the top. And there were also numbers mentioned in case of emergency. In the picture, you see a defibrillator. It is used to give and shock in case of emergencies. It is like an automatic machine for emergencies related to your heart and cardiac arrest. Then we went to see a beautiful sunrise in Copenhagen using the metro system, which is a driverless system. It is, has 21 kilometers of network. And after that, we took a train to Sweden. A very beautiful thing about Station Soya is there is very clear and detailed marking. And there is indication where the train will come with the coach number, seat number and other details. We changed the train once before reaching Stockholm and I always noticed the details about the train and bogey whenever I was in the Scandinavian countries and sometimes I got to see these amazing parts as this your damper. In Stockholm I got a very interesting bus ride because we went 30 minutes on land or we drove 30 minutes on land and we drove 30 minutes on water. It was a completely different experience and the water was also around one meter deep and we went around two kilometers inside before taking a u-turn and coming back but it was a new experience and something different then i visited the city for some time using the local buses and then i visited the swedish metro station uh, the metro is a trans rapid system and there are three different lights and seven different routes. All of the seven routes meet at T-Central station. The crowded train can carry 1000 to 200 passengers and the railway stations are painted and they are really beautiful. I am taking this train which will take 25 hours to reach from Stockholm to Narvik. Now this is not the longest train uh, in Europe, there are trains which are longer but they usually take a C-shape or something. This is the state and Narvik is the highest point which you can reach by railways to the top, to the northern side of Europe. So during the journey, we met seven young people who are also interrailing. Okay, Fang and we are on. We will start now. So I'm interrailing and I've made new friends. Maybe everyone will give a short introduction about themselves. Yeah. Also, ich heiße Emilia. Um, my name is Marietta. Yeah, my name is Katarina. My name is Noah and I come from Spain. Hello, I'm Lina. Uh -huh. Hello, my name is Johanna. I'm traveling with Emilia. And we are from Germany. Hello, my name is Johanna. I'm traveling with Emilia. And we are from Sweden. And now we're on the way to Norway. And then we'll see who we are. Hello, my name is Johanna. I'm traveling with Emilia. And we are from Germany. Hello, my name is Johanna. I'm traveling with Emilia. And we're on the way to Norway. And then we'll see who we are. Hello, my name is Johanna. I'm traveling with Emilia
I'm 18 years old and I'm interrailing um, through Denmark, Norway and Sweden. I'm also 18 years old and I'm traveling with her and her. Um, yeah, we've been to um, Denmark and uh, uh, Norway and Sweden and now we are going to uh, Norway. And yeah. Ich reise mit den beiden hier und äh, ja, wir haben äh, uns gedacht, dass wir nach dem Abi mal äh, ein bisschen rumreisen und noch ein bisschen mehr von der Welt sehen und ähm, genau waren bisher in Dänemark und Norwegen und Schweden, wie schon gesagt, aber genau. So, also ich also bin in Sweden und on my way to Norway. Und wir waren bis jetzt in Schweden und fahren als nächstes nach Norwegen. Okay, second question, zweite Frage. What is the thing which you really like about interrailing? And what is the one thing which you would like to see improved? Okay. Um, I really like that it's quite cheap for young people because if you would uh, book seven, seven train routes uh, without interrail, it would be much more expensive. Um, and I like going by train. Basically, because you, uh, it's it's a slow way of traveling, um, and you can just see the nature and beautiful landscape. What I especially like is the flexibility of the interrail pass because we um, originally had a different route in mind, but um, because of the flood, we couldn't do that. We could just uh, think up another way of going to Norway. Um, so it was really really easy to do. Pues, eh, yeah. eh, pues a mí me parece que el de Rail, a, a, aparte de haber hecho un trato con mi país para hacerlo la mitad de barato, es una oportunidad para gente que no tiene tantos recursos de poder viajar a lo largo de Europa sin tener que preocuparse mucho a, eh, por el dinero. Sí, para mí es también la flexibilidad y también me gusta mucho ir en tren porque puedes todavía caminar y read books and stuff, uh, but um, what I didn't like was uh, the stress because uh, we really had uh, to replan our route uh, often. Uh, if one tra train is too late then you can't catch the another train after it and... Uh, I do like to travel with trains so Interrail is really cool for me. I also really like the app but it was re what would be really even better if um, there were like um, information, more uh, recent information yeah. in the app because mm. there's only the um, original plan and you can't see the, um, the, the new changes in trains or something. Ähm, ja, ich mag auch Reisen mit dem Zug sehr gerne und dass man so in fast alle europäischen Länder eigentlich reinkommt oder extrem große Auswahl an Ländern hat, wo man hinreisen kann und auch für eigentlich kaum Geld. Uh, you said about reservations, yeah. so you would like to see it in a single app, do you mean? Also ich finde es generell schwierig. Ich glaube, es ist auch einfach ähm, die Sache, wir sind aus Deutschland gewohnt, dass wir keine Reservierung brauchen. Und es ist einfach mhm. nur, man muss das die ganze Zeit so im Kopf, Hinterkopf behalten. Ähm, und bei uns gab es deswegen auch ein paar Probleme, weil die Züge ähm, halt dann auf einmal nicht mehr ähm, möglich sind. Und das ist ein bisschen unklar bei uns gewesen. So. Aber uh, you said you like traveling in trains. So is there anything you like about the journey, meeting new people? Or I would prefer to travel by train than car because you can walk around, you can use the toilet uh, or the bathroom and um, the car can be uh, really tight yeah. um, and the plane is uh, really bad for the climate um, and also not that comfortable. Okay. You went to three different countries. So how easy was it crossing borders from and how do you explain to someone, maybe non-Europeans, how easy is it to go to different countries? Um, it was really easy because um, we just had to um, show our pass um, a friendly friend from um, Germany to Denmark and um, that one went really fast and easy. Do you have to say to the younger people who are looking to travel by trains or by public transportation? Mm, yeah, they should prepare to have some stress, but um, 
but it's uh, really nice if you're open and um, if you're open to changes and uh, uh, yes um, it's I think it's uh, for young people it's a really uh, great way to travel um, because you can meet other people right <laughs> here uh, and um, yes see many places you haven't visited before then after spending some time in Narvik uh, I took a ship to the island of Kraitoya where we met our friend Arthur. An interesting fact is that the ship is free of cost to all people with or without any public transportation vehicle. It is also applicable in many islands in Norway which is which are not connected to the mainland. The island of Kraitoya has an area of 108 square kilometers and a coastline of 17 kilometers. It has one highest mountain which is known as Mountain Nona. This is the first hike which I did in Norway. The peak was 1012 meters or 3320 feet tall. I had a chance to use my drone and I was the sole person on the track. Then I returned home and later I spoke to Arthur. I am with Arthur. He is from Norway. He has traveled to many places. He has hosted many people and we are going to ask him some questions. So the main topic is you talk about peace and justice in Europe mm -hmm. and I have chosen travel, sustainability and mobility. Right. So we'll speak about uh, all the three. So for mobility, I saw like when I stayed at your place, there were ships and you told me that they are also free and there were some school buses which I saw. So. Uh, do you think it sh should be possible for people to travel from any place in the country at a low cost? In general, yes. In general, yes. It has to be weighed up against the uh, impact on nature, of course, but in general, yes. Uh, and how, having been to many European countries, how do you feel that most countries are doing or the ones which you have been to? In Europe, fairly well. Um, although I must say I'm a little bit saddened by the fact that the airplane industry has taken such a large chunk of the inter-European travel. It is faster, of course, but it has come at the cost, and that's the cost of, uh, of the reduction of, of railway routes, really. So, I mean, if you, for example, look at the route like Barcelona-Paris, um, before you could take the night train, and it had a fixed cost. Um, I mean, if you leave aside the market policy for the prices and everything, but you could travel that route at a, at a fixed cost. And now the airplane came along and it's, it's supposedly faster. But the fact is that you have to go to the airport, you have to do all these things. Active time spent doing all of this comes up to several hours. If you take a night train, uh, you sleep anyways. So the active time traveling is also a couple of hours, so it isn't really much slower. But still, we use the airplanes nowadays. Um, and it has come at a cost, as I said. Many of these routes are now gone and railway Europe, as we know it, is uh, rotting a little bit in some places. So, apart from railway line, do you think anything that uh, we in Europe could do to improve the use of public transportation? Um, the use? Do you mean like having more people use it? Yeah, having more people use it to promote it. Yes. I mean, I, I find that public transport intercity, like uh, in, at least inside countries, through railway is very good in Europe, also when it comes to buses in general. Like I'm, I've been happy with it when I go to Europe. It's a lot better than here. It's easy to, to go from place A to B with these transportation ways. But I think they should really hold back a bit on the airplanes and maybe uh, focus more on railways, to be honest. Uh, yeah. And do you think that the cost of ticket for railways is okay or should the government uh, do something? Or It's a complicated topic. I think some of them are too expensive, to be honest. And the market-driven policies that uh, companies nowadays use to, uh, to calculate ticket prices uh, make it hard for people and students sometimes because um, it means that on lines that have high demand, it's very hard to get a ticket and that means it's very hard to, for example, go home to your family um, or go anywhere, really. But back in the days, they used like a fixed cost per kilometer, kind of, <laughs> to calculate the travel cost. That would uh, make it a lot more... Uh, easy for people to know what sort of money they needed to travel around. Nowadays it's not that stable anymore, so you never know. A ticket can sometimes cost 30 euros and sometimes it's 200 euros. So yes. Uh, what do you have to say about uh, the public transportation in Norway in general, considering both the big cities and the secluded islands? 
Um, within cities, it's very good. Cities like Oslo, Bergen, they have great public transportation systems that are modern. They use applications and digital services to a great extent. Um, they're very future oriented. But intercity, uh, it gets harder. In the south, you have the trains, uh, but here in the north, it's basically impossible. We have buses, but the routes are not optimized because everybody have cars and drive around anyways. Um, this has many reasons, but it's it's not adopted to a full extent in Norway. Most people take cars here, at least in the north. It makes it very hard to. Uh, it's it's a bit of a conundrum for the government whether they should spend a lot of money on the public transport when people want to use it. So, so. Okay, and you have traveled to many countries. Uh, so, for viewers in Norway, you generally don't have. Uh, so, in Europe, you generally don't have many borders. How easy was it for you to go from one country to another? And was it a good experience meeting new people and knowing new culture? Of course, it always is. Um, as a Norwegian, it is of course easy. We are strictly speaking not a part of the EU, but we're in the Schengen area, so mm -hmm. we can travel passportless to all of all of the EU. So I mean, there are no passport controls, and that's obviously very good. Um, and meeting other cultures is of course brilliant, and I think that's one of the best things about Europe. It's the ease as at which you, you can just go and experience something completely different in terms of language and culture and food and these things. And would you suggest the younger people of Europe to visit many countries when they are young? If they have the opportunity to, then yes. Um, but more than just visit them, I think it is important to try to integrate somewhat and, and actually get a feel for what people want people think because it's not only I don't think you should only go somewhere to see something you should go somewhere to feel and experience it and that always includes talking to people okay thank you very much Arthur then after saying goodbye to our friend and the island we returned to the mainland of Norway but we were still in the region of Lofoten Islands here I did six tracks in a period of four days the first was offer soy comment which was really beautiful and then I went to Slovar where there were four tracks nearby. This is the view from one of the mountain tops of Slovar. And then I went to Tvejel Portin, which is also known as Devil's Gate. And I took a picture from there. Then we went to Kabelbeck where a World War II bunker is turned into a sanctuary for people to stay for free. Now this let's go inside. In the night. Beds. Candles, kitchen, fireplace, no beds, no candles, and a really good message. Uh, you can open the window and see from the top. And it's in the middle of the jungle. Since there was no electricity in some scams, this is how I managed to charge my phone and my drones. And then I was hosted by another friend where I met Mike from New Zealand. So we have Mike with us and he has a mic in his hand. And uh, he is from New Zealand. He is right now visiting many European countries and we'll just ask him how his experience is regarding using of public transportation systems in Europe. And having been to five countries, how easy do you find it to go from one country to another? Really easy. Like, I just jump on a train and I end up in, um, in another country in like a couple of hours. And it's just, as long as you get on the right train or right plane, then you get there with no issues. How do you find this was it a new experience for you that it is easier to cross borders or did you already know about it? Uh, I knew I knew about it, but I wasn't sure how like the local police forces or local agencies go about you go crossing the borders. I thought they might still uh, check your passport or something, but so far it's just been checking only the tickets and how have you been traveling mainly in all these countries uh i've mainly been traveling by train um uh, with a couple flights in there as well speaking about trains what is the one thing which you like and what is the one thing which you will suggest the people to improve um 
I really like how I really like how the trains like there's so many trains and you can if you can see like all the departure times you can just sort of depending on what sort of ticket you have you can just go get on a train and then go from city A to city B which is really nice I've been using the Eurorail pass so I've just been sort of turning up and not taking trains that you reserve seats on but the trains that you have to reserve seats on I don't like the fact that it doesn't tell you how many seats are left on the train to be reserved um, because that would really help me sort of choose whether I want to reserve the seat right now or wait till later or just stuff like that yeah okay understood thank you and how is the railway journey when you go from one place to another do you like the scenes do you like talking to people or how is your experience when you travel in the trains uh the experience as you has been good so far um i usually like looking at the scenery a lot um but i usually try and make conversation with people around me and I've been able to do that on almost all of my trains so far. Um, usually with people traveling, traveling around to other cities as well. Not, not usually like locals, just on shorter journeys. Usually people on longer journeys. And being a youth yourself, do you think this the pass, the interrail pass, is affordable by people, or would you suggest some changes? I, I think it is affordable. Um, yeah, I definitely think it's affordable because when I first came to Europe, I didn't have the Eurorail pass. And then I was kind of like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to travel around. But then I sort of looked into Eurorail pass and sort of averaged out sort of the cost per day of traveling and was like, actually, this is this seems affordable and it's really good if i miss a train i can just like jump on the next one going to that location within the same day which is really nice and just gives me a lot of more confidence when taking the trains okay thank you very much mike thank you then after staying a night in moskina's camp i took a ship which took me more the ship again is bfk If you have a car, you needed to pay some more. But for people on foot, it was free of cost. Then from Bodo, I took a train and went to Andalusnes, which is known as the mountain capital of Norway. The one hour forty minute journey takes you from the wild mountain surrounding Dombas to the beautiful fjord in Andalusnes. There is a bridge which is suspended sixty meters above the Green River Roma, which runs parallel. to the train for much of the trip then i set up camp at ondolnes camping the place was really beautiful on the first day i couldn't go for hiking because of bad weather but i rested for some time and did laundry and other remaining tasks as buying groceries then on the next day i started my trek in rome stalls again the word again in Norwegian language means knife edge, and this was for a stretch of around one or one and a half kilometer, where we had to walk on the edge of the mountain. This was a ten kilometer trek, and for me, it was one of the most beautiful treks. It contained view of the mountains, of waterfall, of fjord. It was around four or five hours of journey. and it was well guided by marking throughout the way since it is moderately difficult it is advised to check weather before going out on this trek but i would definitely recommend this trek to anyone who is hiking in norway then at the end we stopped at ramstrekken to take a picture and then i took a train to stavanger where on the first day we visited the city center and it contained various lakes and birds then on the next day we went on a, for a trek to 
Spryxtolan, which is also known as the Pulpit Rock. You will get some of the most beautiful views of the Norway Fjords from the top and you can also sit on the edge of the mountain. I reached all the places throughout the journey using public transportation and then I made Shubham in. Okay, so we have Shubham with us here. He is from the Merchant Navy and he has visited many countries in Europe. Shubham, can you give us a short introduction about yourself? I know myself Shubham Asana from Lucknow, India and I am working as a navigating officer uh, for a shipping company in YK. How easy do you find to travel in Europe? Well, it is quite easy uh, because especially specifically for Germany as well like a lot of good transportation system it is railway system so I find it very convenient like all the time like whether it is by train or ferry or by flight so it, and what do you use the most to go from one place to one city to another or from one country to another uh, this trip I'm using the flix bus most of the time hmm. then uh, on my previous trip trip last year I was having the EU rail pass uh, that was one month unlimited so I was using that that was also quite convenient apart from cost is there anything else which the, the interrail pass can improve oh, I, I suggest that that's the only thing of concern okay. and rest I certainly believe the trains are very much comfortable uh, question you have been to so many European countries you tend to cross border how is your experience or ease of experience going from one country to another very, very normal it's like like it's in India like going from one state to another so oh. it's very very very, very comfortable. Okay, Shivam. Thank you very much for your time. In trains, we saw that there was Pirelli for the blind, as well as some trains had a section where the child or smaller children could play. In Bergen, I was hosted by Eric, where I also met Jana and Vladimir. Then I took the famous Slamsbana train, and the journey went to various bridges, and the waterfall scene was beautiful. Then I went to Trotunga. I started my hiking journey in the night, whereas most people do it as a single day morning and night. But I wanted to camp at the top and it was the first thing that I completed in my bucket list. I spent the night camping there at 1 or minus 1 degree Celsius and in the morning it was completely foggy but it was a beautiful view of the moon. I Click some pictures in the night and then as well as some in the morning holding the Indian flag. A good feature traveling in public transportation in Oslo was that the next ticket was always cheaper. My first ticket I got a 4% discount, then 7 and then 10. Then after roaming some time around Oslo, I took another train where I met James. So this is James. He is interrailing, like me, <laughs> but doing it much better. <laughs> and. Uh, We'll just ask him some questions which we are going to ask the travellers. What do you like the best about travelling with trains or with public transportation for that matter? Uh, definitely not sleeping um, on the floor all the time. Um, I'd say I, I, like, I like talking to people, I like making new friends, I like... Uh, I wouldn't say that I particularly enjoy uh, uh, the comforts and amenities of a, of a standard European train, but... Uh, it's been fun, like, just seeing like the entire world pass by. What do you think they can do better to improve the experience of using trains in Europe? Make the reservation services uh, easier and more intuitive to use and less dumb. <laughs> and do you prefer traveling more with public transportation as compared to car and would you promote it in this current time? I would, but <laughs> I'm not sure if that's just because I can't drive a car, so yeah. I mean, okay. maybe get back maybe to soon. me on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll contact him. Thank you, James. So then I took a bus to Christianstown, from which I took a ship to Alborg in Denmark, and I visited my friend over there. After spending two days in Alborg, we took a train back to Germany and going through Hanover and Hamburg, I reached Braunschweig. It was an eventful journey where I met people from different countries and got to know their reviews on mobility, sustainability and transportation. 
having traveled to four countries around 7400 kilometers taking 32 trains i returned home to brunswick